the thing is, when you talk about language, it's confusing because language has two, at least two levels of meaning. Mm -hmm. There's what the words say, and there's what the sound says as mm -hmm. well. And those are two sometimes different things. And so, for instance, this man you heard last time, he's actually a preacher. He's, he's preaching to a, a oh, congregation, and he says, and he will bring peace into the world, like that. He screams this. So on the one hand, he's saying something that is very peaceful, but he's screaming. He's very angry too. And I'm interested when you have two or three meanings to the language like that. But it's only one of the meanings. For example, sometimes when I write songs, most, most times when I write a song, I start with the sound. And then I turn the sound into words, you know. For example, I might know that I want I hear the music and I want the words to go ooh, ah, ee, ah, mm, da, ah, like that. So I listen to that and I make that into words then. Who are the tapum? Do you understand? So the sound makes the words. But for me, the, they must both be interesting, both the sound and the words. And this is one of the reasons that using poetry in music is so difficult because the poem already exists mm. and sometimes it isn't the right sound to make music with. I wasn't writing a book. Um, I was writing a, a part of a book, yeah. There's, there's a book coming out um, which has eight authors. Um, each one is writing about cybernetics from his own point of view. One of the people is a neurophysiologist, another is a botanist, another is um, a politician. There's me, a musician. Each one is a different type of um, person. I'm the only artist, actually. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm doing that. I finished that. Yeah. Well, let me see. Cybernetics is the science for dealing with complex systems um, that don't generate predictable results. Do you understand? Um, most, most sciences deal with systems that you can um, describe the result of mm -hmm. perfectly. Like mechanics, for instance. Um, if you're dealing with machines, you know that the machine is going to do that. Mm -hmm. right? But in cybernetics, you're dealing with complex systems like human bodies, for example, or large groups of people. And you don't know quite what the results are going to be. Now, the reason I became interested was because the way I've been making music for the last few years is different from the way most composers work. I don't go into the studio with a plan in mind and with a, a piece of music in my head, which I then make. I go into the studio and I, I set a whole lot of things up and I set some people up and I say, let's do this, let's do that, let's do that and see what happens. So what I'm trying to do is um, set in motion a situation that will generate interesting results but I don't know exactly what those results will be beforehand. So um, I became interested in ways of dealing with that problem, and cybernetics is, is one way of dealing with that problem. For example, the main instruction says, sing any note that you can hear. It's, it's only voices, there are only voices in this piece. And it says, sing any note that you can hear. Now, because there are many other people singing, you sing one of their notes, all right? You, you sing a note that's already uh, being sung by somebody else. But one of the interesting things that happens is that if you're in any room, uh, this is hard to explain, the, the room will have a, what's called a resonant frequency. I see. Um, it means that the room tends to make one note louder than any other. So with this instruction, sing any note that you can hear, there is a higher probability that you'll sing that note mm -hmm. than any other. So what happens after the piece starts, it quite soon resolves itself around this drone, the resonant frequency of the room. And that's, that's an example of the automatic controls that enter into the piece. Edison had a theory that all sound existed forever. So once you made a sound, it just carried on out into the universe. But it was always there somewhere. The energy of this sound was always there. And so he wanted to construct uh, a device so that you could pick up like the sounds of the ancient Romans. Uh -huh. and the sounds of uh, Shakespeare talking and things like that. He mm. thought that if you were, if you constructed powerful enough 
equipment, you could get these sounds back again. Yeah, so I think um, human beings are equipped to see a certain, or to perceive a certain range of things. Mm -hmm. Now, anything that is moving too quickly, they see as static. I see. Anything that is moving very, very quickly, you see a static. Like all of the particles in your body are moving all the time, but I can't see them. I see them as still. Yeah. Also, anything that is moving too slowly, like the rocks, for example, or the garden, we see that as static mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Actually, they're, they're all, all these things are moving. So if you draw a graph, it's like that. You know, this is, this is speed of movement along this axis here. Um, okay.